security risk in governance. Now, the first fundamental, like I said, if you think about security, we need to think about the CIA triad, right? So let's talk about confidentiality. Now, confidentiality is protecting the information from any unauthorized access. So you have a piece of information that is intended for only right, right group of people or right person as an individual. You need to make sure that piece of information is only accessible by the intended audience or intended group. And objective is to make sure we protect it from any unauthorized disclosure, right? So this is it's it's a kind of a very common fundamental we do see all of uh, all of the time uh, in in our organizations in our day to day life we have data classifications certain data classifications uh, that is only intended by the right right group of people so that is that is how we want to do it now I, you would see several exam tips here into a different color these exam tips are important when you so if you focus into these exam tips you're going to get help in the questions that you might get in the real exam okay so in order to maintain the confidentiality you should always encrypt the data it is a thumb rule no matter at what state be it at rest be it at motion so for data in motion tls1.2 is the standard organization standard industry acceptable right and at rest it is AES 256 that's a de facto standard for any encryption nowadays so this is a bare minimum requirement okay you might want to take a note of it uh, uh, you, you feel free to take it okay now what are the various examples of the uh, confidentiality requirements what exactly we are trying to protect for, it's very important to, uh, for us as an organization or an individual to understand what is the thing that we need to protect or we call it as a crown jewels okay so PII personally identifiable information or PHI uh, protected health information they all must be protected against any disclosure okay these are the uh, crown jewels of most of the organizations I you might also in, want to include the PCI information like card data okay now any any passwords uh, or any sensitive field in the application they all should be masked they all should be encrypted hidden from uh, un unwanted uh, unauthorized access then uh, all the password that's being transmitted in the network or it is stored in the application they shouldn't be in, in the clear text they all should be either encrypted or masked or hashed there is a hashing algorithm that you might want to use then TLS transport layer security must be used for the transmitting sensitive information now make sure uh, I mean we all know this from an industry experience that uh, SSL is no more secure right so CISSP has also evolved with this so SSL is no more secure we need bare minimum TLS 1.2 not even 1.1 and not even 1.0 okay so unsecure transmissions like uh, file transfer protocol or uh, anything that is not protected uh, they should not be allowed it is it is very important that you use a secure channel for transmission not HTTP instead it should be HTTPS okay log files log files are very sensitive because uh, it's 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 something once the breach has happened although I mean in general people do not take logs seriously but yeah they do take seriously when some kind of disaster or breach has happened log is the only way to identify uh, what exactly has happened so it should be stored in in a way we store our rest of the sensitive information highly classified and well protected okay because if logs have been destroyed there's no way you can find out who who did the bad bad thing to your organization okay 
integrity so integrity means protection against any unauthorized modification or alteration of the information uh, you do not intend so you want to make sure that that integrity of the information is intact it shouldn't be altered it shouldn't be uh, changed at any at, at any point of time right what are the various integrity requirements so there are various attacks like injection attacks that happens uh, they might be able to drop the tables uh, in the database, delete the tables in the database. A common example is SQL injections, right? So eventually what's going to happen? It is going to uh, impact the integrity, okay? So input validation is one of the mitigation technique for uh, those kind of, these kind of attacks, okay? Then ensuring the accuracy and reliability of the data. So there are cyclic redundancy checks, checksums, message digests, it's it's the hashes. So hashes are normally used to ensure the integrity is in place. So you have a message in a plain text, you create a hash of it. And we are going to discuss in domain three and four in a very detailed way, but yeah, just to give you a glimpse of what exactly hashing is. So you create a hash value of any text message or any any clear text any change in the clear text is going to change the hash value now the beauty of the hash is it is a one-way function one whenever you have created a hash you cannot reverse and identify what exactly was a clear text okay internal and external consistency within the system message information that is being passed through to and fro it should be consistent the way it was originated from the source it should be delivered in the same same manner same way in the same context to the destination as well okay some examples of the requirements so there should be input validation just to make sure that uh, any any arbitrary code being entered in the system should be checked in a very first stage before it is processed by the system okay then whenever there is a uh, published software it the user should uh, it should provide the user with a message digest or a hash code i see there is a something difference between internal and external consistency so something that is so any message that has been generated from the system right uh, it, it has some value and you need to make sure that it reaches to your destination with the same value right so message should, should be consistent no matter where it is going the end objective is to make sure that integrity is protected did that answer your question okay Uh, where it is okay okay yeah I was talking about the, so whenever you procure any software so it should have the uh, it should come with come up with the message digest or the hash value so that users can validate the accuracy and the completeness of the software uh, whether it is it is not being uh, injected with one of the one of the Trojan horses or it is it is coming up with one of the malwares it is what the company or the vendor claims okay now subject should be subjects it means the users the end user should be prevented from modifying the data unless explicitly allowed until unless you are allowed to do so you shouldn't be able to have the right access so basically what we're trying to talk about is the permissions so by default, everybody should have the read access. That is also when it is needed. If someone is not even allowed or needed to read the information, they shouldn't be given access to the application. By default, if they're supposed to access the application, they all should have read access. And uh, when, when, uh, when someone needs to make any changes like uh, write or execute, these permissions they should be granted further access as per when needed okay i have a question what is a what is a message digest 
message digest is a hash value so we have various uh, uh, hashing algorithm uh, md1 md2 md5 although these are not secure anymore because they have been broken but yeah message digest is a, a hash value so any changes in the so for example you have written uh, uh, any any code piece of code that has been hashed right any changes in that code will result in the change in the hash value so you would get to know that there was some kind of fiddling with the integrity of the data that is how message digest or any hash works okay, okay. cool so there is one uh, common common application i shouldn't be talking about application here because uh, uh, any IC square exams are the vendor neutral exams but yeah just to uh, make sure that you would be able to relate it from your uh, experience tripwire is one of the softwares that is commonly used for the integrity check okay availability availability is a criteria where we expect that data system application should all should be available all the time so purpose of availability is to make sure that the data system application or whatsoever information we are trying to uh, access it should be available all the time now imagine a situation amazon as an e-commerce or take any e-commerce site how critical it would be uh, from the availability perspective from them right imagine amazon going down just for a minute or probably five minutes entire world is not able to access amazon for those five minutes imagine the loss of business it could have right so it is it is it is very important that we we uh we protect the availability so what are the various metrics used for so these are the things we are going to talk in domain seven when we are going to talk about disaster recovery so maximum tolerable downtime what is the like how 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 much the system how long the system could be unavailable then what is the recovery time objective and recovery point objective of these don't worry about these terminologies terminologies we are going to discuss in very much detail in domain seven about it i just included them here uh, so that we just get a hint about what exactly it is then we have service level agreements we all know what exactly service level agreement is uh, like if we have taken services from various third parties or vendors we have the service level agreement signed that the vendors of the third parties are supposed to provide services uh, for this one this uh, like they should have availability of 99.96 percent like nowadays organizations are adopting the cloud uh, infrastructure or cloud environment it is, it is one of the most important and critical aspect of the contractual agreement SLA right in case in case the vendor is not able to fulfill that there is a financial stipulation involved that they would have the uh, some kind of financial penalty and that they have to pay then mtbf mttr mean time between failure mean time to recover we are surely going to discuss this uh, this as well then uh, examples of the availability requirements so software shall meet the software or any application should meet the availability of 99.999 percent or you can go ahead and add as many nines if if you want to so it it, it all depends on the service level agreement then uh, software should be support should access up to 200 users simultaneously this is a figure a rough figure it could nowadays it it might not be very much relevant because uh, the the resource pooling or the users pool given uh, access in a single session uh, is is quite high nowadays now the purpose of uh, purpose of including this point is let's say an application is able to provide a resource pool or the user pool of 200 at a time at a time 200 users can access let's say someone is able to impersonate one or the other users and get access to that uh, resources and just stay there without uh, without discontinuing the session 
this is going to be cause a uh, availability issue the legitimate users won't be able to access the system in, in, in short it is a denial of services okay so it is it is very important that we also consider such points then software must support the replication and provide load balancing like I said all the servers all the softwares and systems they have a bandwidth allocated they have a resources allocated for the access and in case they all have been occupied predominantly occupied they won't be able to uh, fulfill the requirements of the other requests so it is very important that your systems should be properly load balanced so we have various load balancers kept in for the purpose of the load balancer I'm going to quickly for people it is uh, just to give you a hint what exactly load balancer is so here is the client who is going to access and here are the systems let's call it as a firewall okay now in case for example in that like if the system doesn't have the load balancer what would it would have been done it would have accessed this this system now there is a certain limitation that it could provide uh, that there is a certain uh, bandwidth limitation right so in case all these n clients keep on accessing this what it would do it would die now what it does uh, what it does the load balancer does if, if everyone connects to the load balancer the access would be equally distributed among the various resources now the this thing is completely transparent to the end user they are not going to know where exactly the request has landed but in this case uh, it is it is properly being managed in case let's say this device this device or this server is down the request coming to this server it would be distributed to the rest of the nodes or rest of the systems so that any user is not being impacted okay so this is a core fundamental of any load balancer how uh, this is how it works okay now mission critical functions of the software should be restored to the normal operations within 30 minutes now this is something again based on the organizational uh, requirement amazon doesn't want their system to be restored after 30 minutes it's definitely going to be within one minute or two minutes uh, so this is where your mtd and rto is impacted so for critical systems the RTO or the recovery time objective how much time it is needed to be recovered should be less than 30 minutes okay so this is this is common uh, uh, requirements from confidentiality integrity and availability I'm gonna take a quick pause to see if anyone has any questions <laughs> 